The Melody Valve uh, is a, a new product developed by Medtronic. It's designed uh, to replace a surgical uh, valve conduit, a conduit which is a tube, that has already been placed by surgeons in children with congenital heart disease. Um, over the lifetime of a patient, that conduit and that valve won't last uh, but a specific cer certain time. And so ultimately the valve will degenerate and the conduit will degenerate and then the patient has to go back for surgery another time. So the malady valve was developed by uh, Philip Bonhoeffer uh, while he was in Paris, France at the time. And the concept of the malady valve was to take uh, an existing stent, which is the metal cage. And in Europe at that time, uh, there was a surgical conduit made out of the neck vein of a cow. The neck vein of the cow had uh, a valve inside of it and it was surgically sewn in to patients. Dr. Bonhoeffer took that surgical valve and vein, shaved it, made it skinnier, and sewed it onto a stent. So now, technically, this stent can be delivered like any stent through a catheter and it doesn't have to require open heart surgery. In this particular instance, this is the melody valve, which is, you can see on the inside is three leaflets. These are, these are the neck vein valves of a cow. And then what you do is you take this stent and you take it on a balloon catheter that we're going to introduce through the vein. And what you end up doing is you take the valve and you place it on the balloon like this. So in order to make sure that you put the valve in correctly, the right side up, there are blue sutures at this end, there are white sutures at this end. There's the blue carrot, this is the white catheter. So blue goes to blue, white goes to white. That way the valve's always the correct side up because otherwise you would put it in upside down, which would be bad. But what happened now is we take this and like all stents, we now will roll our fingers and we will crimp this down. So we're gonna, we're gonna really smash this stent down into a very tiny uh, valve stent I'm going to take this off because I can't do that with this because this is plasticized. And then what we would then do is on this balloon we would keep rolling the stent down and the valve down real tight on the balloon until it's very, very narrow. Then we take this plastic covering and we push it up over and now the valve is inside the plastic covering on the balloon catheter. And now what we will do with this catheter, we will introduce it through a vein in the leg over a wire and we get it into position, which is be about right here, inside a surgical conduit with a valve. We then, once it's in position, we expose the, the, the valve like this. And then this balloon, which has two balloons, will blow up, the first balloon will blow up halfway and we'll take the valve up halfway. The second balloon will blow the stent up and the valve up all the way and that, then the, the valve will now fit inside the surgical graft that was already uh, degenerating. And as soon as we then take the balloon down and remove the catheter, the valve inside the stent, like this, will start to work. So it immediately starts to open and close. So basically what's done is now without open heart surgery is to implant a heart valve on the right side of the heart in the pulmonary position. The goal of this particular uh, product was not to take the place of surgery because you already have to have surgical conduit and valve in place already. This is really designed to extend the lifetime of that surgical conduit. If you take a, a, a child, a baby born, that had to get one of the surgical conduits when they were a baby, that's going to have to be exchanged in a couple of years because they're going to outgrow it. Then once they get large enough to get a, an adult size conduit in place, then that was going to last 10 years. The patient lives till they're 80 years of age, then that's at least eight open heart surgeries that they're going to have to have just to replace the conduit and the valve. So this is really made to go inside that surgical conduit and then take the place and extend the life so it will take over the function of the valve inside and it will treat all of the narrowing inside the conduit because the stent will open up the narrowing. This also can be repeated uh, in Dr. Bonhoeffer's experience uh, there's been some patients that once, if this is to degenerate at some point in time, you can place another one of these inside of this valve. You can put another valve inside and open it up. 
So technically, you could repeat this process over the lifetime of a patient. So maybe instead of eight open heart surgeries, maybe they have three or four open heart surgeries. Our, our focus was to develop a stent that could go in a small child and continue to be expanded as they grow and never have to be replaced. So this is what's called a bare metal stent, which is what most all stents are developed. We were also very interested because there are certain kinds of congenital heart disease where a covering would be very beneficial. So we wanted to design a stent that could also have a covering on it. So from 96 through 1998, that was our focus. Developing a stent that was both bare and could be covered. So we kind of laid the framework, if you will, for the development of the melody by developing the stent that's used. And we also developed the, the, the catheter, the balloon catheter that had two balloons. We developed that while we were developing this stent and that's also what's used with the melody. This is the very first heart valve to ever be approved in the United States for uh, a purpose of, of, of maintaining valve function but without doing open heart surgery. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge event for the United States. Nationwide Children's Hospital was one of only five centers in the United States that actually tested this product over the, since 2007 that ultimately resulted in final FDA approval.